25 years of including all Americans in our conversations, in our preparedness, and in things like today's exercise, where we are going to focus particularly on how the disabled community can stay safe during a big shakeup like the one that Oakland experienced not that long ago that I certainly remember very well. I think I was the only person in the Bay Area not watching the baseball game when Loma Prieta hit. <laughs> it is also my honor to present today a resolution on behalf of the Oakland City Council and, and President Lynette McElhaney regrets not being here herself to deliver this. But I get to present this to Dina Dina, can you come forward? And this is in recognition of the great California shakeout. Whereas the city of Oakland, California recognizes that no community is immune to natural hazards, whether it be earthquake, wildfire, flood, winter storm, drought, or heat wave. I feel like we're having half of those today and recognizes the importance of enhancing its ability to withstand natural hazards, as well as the importance of reducing loss of life, property damage, interruption of public services, and economic loss caused by those hazards. And whereas major earthquakes pose a particular significant and ongoing threat to the entire city of Oakland and the Bay Area region, and the city of Oakland has a responsibility to promote earthquake preparedness internally as well as with the public and plan appropriately for earthquake-related disasters and provide free emergency preparedness training for individuals, neighborhood groups, and community-based organizations through the Oakland Fire Department's core program. And whereas the protection of City of Oakland employees will allow them to facilitate continuity of government and assist the public following a major earthquake event and provide critical services in order to recover more quickly. And that is our goal, to get back on our saddles. Whereas community resiliency to earthquakes and other disasters depends on the preparedness levels of all stakeholders. We said all stakeholders in the community, individuals, families, schools, community organizations, faith-based organizations, nonprofits, businesses, and government. And whereas by participating in the Great California Shakeout on October 15th, 2015, the city of Oakland, California has the opportunity to join all Californians today in strengthening community and regional resilience. And whereas by supporting the Great California Shakeout, the city of Oakland, California can utilize the information on www.shakeout.org, check it out, to educate its residents regarding actions to protect life and property, including mitigating structural and non-structural hazards and participating in earthquake drills like the one the big shaking machine, are you guys all gonna get over there? Oh, there it goes, it knew I was talking about it. <laughs> I hope you're all gonna take a ride on the fun shakeout machine today. So be it resolved that on behalf of the Oakland City Council, the undersigned hereby approves participating in the Great California Shakeout here too by taking time to recognize and acknowledge the importance of preparing Oakland for the purpose of building a safer community and reducing the loss of lives and property from a major earthquake event by taking proactive steps to be prepared. So thank you very much. Happy Great California Shakeout Day today in Oakland. Thank you, Mayor Schaft. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Schaft. Schaft. Anyway, I would now like to introduce Robert Felton. He is the administrator for the Federal Emergency Management Agency. We'll call that FEMA Region 9. Thank you, sir. Well, rarely do I have to bring the mic down to speak. So, uh, <laughs> 
Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Schaff and uh, the City of Oakland uh, for uh, uh, hosting us during the Great Shakeout uh, Day. And also thank you to the Earthquake uh, Country Alliance and Shakeout, and more importantly, the Pacific ADA Center. Honoring the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act and FEMA's America's Preparathon. Emergency managers have learned through events like these that we have plans for individuals with access and functional needs and disabilities. FEMA has a national office of disability integration specialists uh, with coordination and regional disability integration specialists in all 10 of our FEMA regions. They help FEMA harness the assets that disability advocates and service providers bring to the table. This is a powerful message and experience of the quarter century of the Americans with Disabilities Act that we will provide equal access and reasonable accommodations with conscious inclusion of all into the whole community. Today is an opportunity to showcase an event that defines the terms of whole community. The whole community can be a powerful force as we have seen in countless disasters, 95% of the emergency seats, the first, first responders are often those of your family and neighbors. So be ready individually. FEMA can help you do this. Go to ready.gov, be informed, make a plan, build a kit that will support your access and functional needs and the access and functional needs of your family. We are here today to take the collective opportunity to practice drop, cover, and hold on that, that is why practicing drop, cover, and hold on today is more than a feel-good exercise. It is a training exercise that not only may save your life, but may save a life of a loved one. Thank you for having us today. Please welcome Mark Gilarducci, the Director of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services. All right, well, good morning, everyone. And very excited today to be here for the California Great Shakeout and also for the anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act. Two very significant events, but events that uh, correlate and support each other uh, with regards to emergency preparedness. You know, it's really important today, you've heard from the mayor, you've heard from the regional administrator of FEMA, local, federal, now you're hearing from the state all these government agencies coming together to preach and to talk about the importance of emergency preparedness. But it's very important to understand that emergency preparedness starts with you all, starts with you as an individual. Having a plan, having a family plan, developing some supplies, and building a, a, a financial resiliency, whether it's through insurance or through other kinds of of, of, of planning, um, it's very important. Uh, and then be informed about what kind of risks that you face. California is an earthquake prone state. In fact, in just a couple of days, 26 years ago, we're standing at a place where we were hit by a catastrophic earthquake. I remember that. I worked at the Cypress structure uh, via deck collapse doing search and rescue operations. But, we, but just beyond Oakland, we had fires, we had building collapses, we had people's lives disrupted throughout Northern California, throughout the region. These things happen. It's very important in a state like California where we've got the kind of risk that we do for, for, for earthquakes, for fires, for flooding, to be prepared. And today, we practice to duck, cover, and hold on. One of the key things that you can do as an individual in being able to respond when the earth starts to shake. Duck, cover, and hold on. Protecting yourself. And then implementing your plan using your supplies. We have to understand that this is not just a government solution, a government responsibility. It is a whole community. All of us need to take responsibility in preparing ourselves and understand that for a period of time after a major event, you could be and may be and realistically will be on your own um, until we can get all the resources we need in to support you. And so being prepared and being aware empowers you uh, to survive and to negotiate 
and to navigate through the emergencies. So today, I just want to congratulate you all for being interested, being here. I want to encourage you to build that plan, to de develop supplies, and to have uh, a, a, an ability to build the financial resiliency uh, to withstand uh, the next earthquake. It's not a matter uh, of, of, of if, but when that quake's going to occur. Um, we are, uh, California is uh, the highest risk seismically of any state in the country. We live with that, but we also have a wonderful, beautiful state, and it gives us an opportunity to, to enjoy that beautiful state, but part of that is being prepared. So with that, I congratulate with you. Great California shakeout, and remember, duck, cover, and hold on. Thank you very much. So unfortunately, my boss and our fire chief, Teresa Deloach Reed, was not able to attend today, but she has sent Deputy Chief Darren White in her stead. So, but Deputy Chief Darren White. Good morning. My name is Darren White. I currently serve as the Deputy Chief of the Field Operations Bureau with the Oakland Fire Department. I'd like to applaud each of you for being here today as part of 10 to 12 million Americans who will be participating in today's great statewide shakeout. The City of Oakland shakeout is going to do everything it can today to help provide our members of the community with uh, information and preparedness for the next seismic event that may take place within our city. Today is also a day of celebration. The American Disabilities Act was a landmark legislation enacted 25 years ago, which enabled many, many members uh, within our community who were not afforded the opportunities that some of us take for granted. And that legislation has now led to many other improvements. And today you'll see that the city of Oakland is at the forefront of its efforts to incorporate the needs of disabled citizens in our community and our community-wide preparedness efforts. Some of you in the audience may have actually been here in 1989 and 1991 when we had our seismic and catastrophic events within the community. For those of you who have not been here or who were not here and have had no experience with seismic activity, uh, I encourage you to take advantage of the great big shaker over in the plaza. It's going to give you a great opportunity to experience what it's like to experience an earthquake within our community all the way up to a magnitude of 8.0. In addition, I encourage you to take full advantage of the staff, the resources, and the literature that's available here today to help prepare you for earthquake preparedness and preparedness in general when we have our next seismic event so you and your loved ones can be prepared. In addition, we have the Oakland Fire Department's heavy rescue, also known as technical rescue apparatus, positioned here in the plaza. Uh, this apparatus and the personnel that operate that apparatus are well versed in those techniques that are used in a variety of seismic events to retrieve and provide medical care and rescue to those members who may be trapped for extended periods of time. And so uh, that's off to my left here. Please take advantage of the time and uh, the ability to interact with those staff members. I'll be more than happy to engage you and share their knowledge about their uh, specialized equipment and training today. Last but not least, communities of Oakland responding to emergencies. This is a major program. This program has led to thousands of individuals within our community being prepared and able to be self-sufficient in the event of a seismic event. As the speaker before me just mentioned, during the, the case of a catastrophic or seismic, seismic event, uh, individuals, vital, vital resources, and emergency response may be unavailable for anywhere from 24 to 72 hours or beyond. Participating in the core educational series of uh, trainings helps to provide self-sufficiency for you, your families, your neighbors, and th those of you that, um, your coworkers, if you're at work, for instance, when the event occurs. So I would encourage you to take advantage of those three things if you do nothing else today. And again, thank you for your participation in this very important statewide shakeout. I would like now to call upon Vance Taylor, the Chief of California's Office of Emergency Service Access and Functional Needs Office.
How's everybody doing this morning? I have the great opportunity to welcome you and thank you for being here. And I also have the opportunity to pay tribute to a true champion for the cause of civil rights for all those with disabilities and access and functional needs. Richard DeVelder. Richard DeVelder was a champion, a crusader, an advocate, an activist, an example, and a defender. His was the cause of civil rights, the plight of the disabled, the hope of the disadvantaged, and overlooked. Born without arms or legs, the world looked at Richard and said no. No, you can't be integrated within mainstream education. No, you can't live independently. No, you cannot attain professional success. No, no, no. And with every no, the world tried to box them in, tried pushing them off to the side, placed barrier after barrier in front of them. And that's when Richard did something none of his doubters expected him to do. He defied them. He defied them by graduating high school, earning his Bachelor's of Arts in Speech Communication from Cal State Long Beach. He defied them by living on his own, swimming on his own, and cheering for the Lakers in a home he earned on his own. He defied them by succeeding at every turn, overcoming every hurdle, busting through every barrier and wall that was placed before him. And then he turned back, looked at me, you, and the numberless disabled people behind him, smiled and said, nothing for us without us. And then he leaned forward, put his chair into overdrive, and blazed an accessible trail for the world to follow. And we did follow. We followed as he was appointed by three different governors and the President of the United States to identify the needs of people with disabilities and those with access and functional needs and integrate them before, during, and after disaster. We followed as he orchestrated the establishment of the Office of Access and Functional Needs, an office which I get to now lead. We followed as he told us to develop a personal preparedness plan to act as though no one was coming to save us and to evacuate when called upon by law enforcement to do so. And because we followed, we're better prepared for disasters. We're safer. And many of our brothers and sisters have lived through man-made and naturally caused disasters. And then, sadly, he was taken from us. And for reasons we still don't understand, we find ourselves in a world without him. But though he is no longer physically here with us, we continue to be surrounded by his legacy. Indeed, in that sense, Richard will never leave us. We will continue to benefit from his work, to find strength in his example, and to live fuller, more meaningful lives because in breaking down barriers, he showed us all how to live. Richard blessed our lives, and it is my honor and your honor to acknowledge and celebrate him today. We will not forget you, Richard. We will not lose sight of the mission. We will continue to blaze a trail for all to follow because that's what you'd want us to do. Thank you, Richard.
I would like everyone to please welcome Erica Jones. She is the director of the Pacific ADA Center. Hi, y'all. So I'm, I'm surrounded by uh, people with disabilities from the uh, Berkeley CIL and from the Lion Center. So they're going to be presenting something after I'm finished, and we're really happy to have them with us. I've been the director of the Pacific ADA Center for the Americans with Disabilities Act for 25 years now. And uh, as you all know, or may not know, uh, this law is of the people, by the people, and for the people. So it was all of you that started the bubbling of there needs to be a civil rights law for people with disabilities in order to be able to go into a restaurant, to have access to bathrooms, whoever thought of that, uh, have access to transportation, school, your voting rights, all down the line from employment to uh, events like this with city and county and local governments and to private entities and telecommunication. So the ADA encompasses rights for everyone around all that. In 1986, the National Council on Disability began writing the ADA. Um, how many people knew the publication toward independence? Okay, well, that's really interesting. That's the first publication that came out suggesting that we needed a national law. And back in 1986, I was around and helped to generate with many, many other people these ideas to come to the forefront. In 1988, uh, the National Council on Disability published on the threshold of independence. And in 1988, the first draft of the ADA was introduced to Congress. So keep 1988 in your mind as the first introduction of the ADA, which was not written by government but was written by people with disabilities in favor of people with disabilities. Because in um, Congress in 1990, only two years later, on July 26, the ADA was passed into law. That window of two years to get a law as sweeping as the ADA passed through Congress both the Senate and the House, is sweeping. Um, the Supreme Court then heard about Olmstead, which we all know had to do with nursing homes, and that was in 1999. That also uh, created the Sutton Trilogy, which changed the face of the ADA, how it was interpreted. So people with disabilities did not think that the courts and Congress were interpreting the ADA in a proper way. Because of that, there was another publication called Writing the ADA, Turning It Right, Right to Left, as opposed to Writing. Um, and in 19, I mean, in 2008, the ADA Amendments Act was passed. That's the first amendment had to go through Congress, passed a whole act, changing the ADA back to where its original intent was. Now, I'm sure that you all know that in the ADA there are areas of rescue, which have to do with emergency preparedness. Those areas of rescue are where we are all supposed to go and sit and wait for help. Wait, just wait. Um, in a 9-11 incident, that began to wake up 
very quickly, and then even more so during Katrina, the whole area of emergency preparedness for people with disabilities. And it really got a big push because the people that were in areas of rescue in 9-11 did not make it. And the people, sounds like a fire engine, but they're all here. Where is that coming from? Oh, there it goes. Somebody else is driving the engine. Okay, so we need to understand that the, uh, the ADA was a proponent of emergency preparedness in getting people out of flooding areas, earthquakes, high rises. And I would say that the whole responsibility really relies on individuals. It's not just about what they can do for us. It's what we can do for ourselves. So in Drop, Cover, Hold On, um, Berkeley CIL has been very generous and they're going to demonstrate. We also have a table up here with more information under the Pacific ADA Center table with handouts. And as they are going to demonstrate the shake, rattle, and roll, I would like to introduce uh, Brandon, who is from Berkeley CIL, to introduce his team. Brandon Young, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Erica. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Brandon Young. Uh, I'm a program manager at the Center for Independent Living in Berkeley. Uh, CIL, as we're known, is a organization that is dedicated to the independence of, for people with disabilities. Uh, not only are we in Berkeley, we want everyone to know here in Oakland that we are deep in Oakland. We have two offices here in Oakland, one right downtown, 1904 Franklin, as well as an office in Fruitvale, uh, in the Fruitvale Plaza. Uh, CIL is also very much into independence and making sure that the disability community is represented in uh, all kinds of things like this event. Um, and so we have my colleagues up here who are going to help demonstrate what, it, what uh, the aspects of um, safety for people with disabilities here. Uh, so with that, I will talk about drop, cover, hold for people with uh, disabilities. Uh, if you experience an earthquake, you need to, one, drop. So everyone would drop. Uh, and drop essentially means uh, to stop what you're doing and stay still. If you're in a wheelchair, uh, you need to also lock. So you would lock your wheels. If you're in a manual chair, you would have to lock your wheels. If you're in a power chair, you would turn it off. Uh, so drop or lock. Cover would be then to cover your head. Uh, make sure that uh, you protect your head and neck. Uh, most things, uh, most people get hurt when things on the walls or things from the ceiling fall down. So we need to make sure that we cover ourselves. So if you're an able-bodied person, you'd be uh, on the ground covering under a table uh, or something like that. If there's no table, then you just wanna be down on the ground. Uh, and then hold. Hold on means to just stay where you are uh, until the shaking stops, then proceed to find uh, safety. So uh, those are all the important aspects um, that we need to talk about with uh, if you're in a wheelchair or if you're uh, someone who is, has some mobility movement. Uh, additionally, I just wanted to say, uh, as well as today, uh, Oakland celebrating the 25th anniversary of the ADA, uh, we also, today, 1015, is also uh, White Cane Day. All my friends out there in the blind community, wave your white canes. Uh, white, white Cane Day is a, was a day that was created by Lyndon B. Johnson, who wanted to acknowledge the independence of people with uh, visual impairments and totally blind. So. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, remember, drop, cover, hold, uh, and that's it. Thank you.
Thank you, Brandon. My name is Dina Gunning. I'm the Emergency Planning Coordinator for the Oakland Fire Department. And now we would like everyone to join us in the Great California Shakeout Drill. It is the largest earthquake drill in the world. So you are amongst 20 million people today that is going to participate in the drop, lock, cover, and hold on drill. So at this time, I would like to ask everybody, if possible, drop to the ground. If not, make sure that you lock your either walker or wheelchair device. Cover the back of your head and hold on. What we want to make sure of is you want to do this until the shaking stops. The reason we want you to drop or lock, cover, and hold is we do not want the severity of the earthquake to cause injury. So we want you to protect yourselves as best as possible. Stop, wait till the shaking stops. This may be up to 30 seconds. The ground might jerk strongly and knock you down. Protect yourself, prepare for aftershocks. Thank you everybody. You have now just participated in the largest earthquake drill in the world. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you very much. <laughs> Chief Hoffman. Thank you, Ms. Gunning. I will give you my dry and cleaning bill later. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's it for now. But that's just right here. Once again, I would like to encourage everyone to visit all the various people who have brought Information here, there's a wealth of information, including you can come talk to me about the earthquakes I've experienced and you can talk to people at the tables about what they bring to the table. But we're done here. You don't have to go home, but we're done here.